Maybe start at this end so we can start with the Swiss chard right there. It's a typical day for Jeanette Murphy. This white one, I like these. But compared to most of us, there's nothing That's typical great. about it. Because this isn't just any organic garden. Big yellow one. It's in a prison, the Purdy Women's Prison, south of Tacoma. This is a beauty. And this isn't some suburban housewife there. picking zucchini. Do one more harvest after that. She's a convicted murderer in her 27th year of a 50-year sentence. Home. We pick about 150 pounds just out of this garden right here. But total, we have over 308 pounds of zucchini. So we can do all Sentence when she was just 18. Jeanette Murphy struggled to stay out of trouble when she first got to prison. Beautiful tomato. Once, she even spent seven full months in solitary confinement. Say you're 18 years old and you're facing 50 years incarcerated. How do you care? Why do you care? So these will take about three, possibly four years to move up to one gallon size. But that has all changed. Ever since she started taking vocational classes, specifically horticulture. Again, asexual propagation, tip cutting. Murphy learned how to nurture plants and herself. Just make sure that you scar it just about like that. So you're down to the cambium layer. I know every day that I'm incarcerated, nothing takes that away from me. Voila, brand new plant. But at nighttime, it's the homework and it's the readings and there's a life and there's a world beyond these walls. In addition to horticulture classes taught by vocational instructor Ed Tharp from Tacoma Community College, Jeanette takes part in the Sustainable Prisons Project started by Evergreen State College professor Nalini Nadkarni. Four more areas. Four more areas. Oh we do cost analysis. It started in about 2004. Uh, it did not start as a big idea, a big complex, let's teach inmates how to grow cucumbers. Initially, Nadkarni needed help with an unusual science project. So I wanted to learn how we could farm mosses rather than pull it out of old growth forests of the Pacific Northwest. But nobody knows how to grow mosses. Nobody's ever done that before. And I felt I needed partners to do that. And it seemed to me, some, suddenly this idea came to me that maybe prisoners could be terrific partners in growing mosses because they seem to have a lot of time. There's a lot of space in prison yards. She was surprised when the superintendent of Cedar Creek Correctional Center was interested in teaching criminal offenders how to grow moss. And after 18 months, I had my answers. I knew which mosses grew the fastest. And after 18 months, the inmates who had participated in that were completely enthusiastic about what they were doing. The success of the first project inspired Nadkarni to start a lecture series at Cedar Creek. Each month, she'd bring in a professor or a field expert to talk to the inmates about some aspect of sustainability. She brought in a hydrologist to talk about water quality, an organic gardener to talk about growing food. And then suddenly there was composting, and then they built a re recycling shack, and then they started doing water catchment. So every lecture that we brought in, they would respond by saying, we can do that here too. Over the next four years, the Sustainable Prisons Project continued to grow at Cedar Creek. Now, Carney received a $300,000 grant from the Department of Corrections, allowing her to expand the program to three other state prisons, including Stafford Creek, McNeil Island, and now here at Purdy. I had thought before I started this project that prisoners would be resistant to someone from academia, that they would think I was some sort of ridiculous geek, you know, that I love moss and I love trees and how gushy was that. So did all the logistics for your independent learning contract get worked out okay yes, yet? Okay. But it turns out Glad inmates are hungry for expansion? outsiders like Ned Carney. Expansion. Oh gosh, are these strawberries going to be part of it? Fantastic. Yes, they so they're like literally gods to us when they come in. It's a wealth of information for us. Um, our geraniums, Got the it. scented ones, cinnamon scented. No kidding, great. those are great. Yes. On their first so meeting, Ned Carney was impressed so by great. Jeanette Murphy. Great. And there was something in her eyes, there was something in her voice and in her presence that told me that she was really serious. I heard about the project and it was like, this is like written for me. This is everything I care about. This is, you know, caring about the planet, the recycling and listening to her. And then I read her book and it just inspired me. It was like, I so need to be part of this. That's what Ed Tharp likes to hear. As long as you get two nodes for cutting. He spent the last 20 years teaching vocational skills to the woman here at Purdy. He sees a benefit beyond the prison walls. These people are going to get out someday and they're going to be your neighbor. I'd rather have my neighbor have a little bit of nurturing values um, towards plants or whatever it might be. It's good for you. 
it's empowering to grow something and to take care of something and to nurture something and tell and see the the growth process and just hey I did that like I'm responsible for that that thing right there you know that you're eating I, I did that I grew that we have the Olympic Mountains to the west not everybody in here has a long time there will be people that will get out and you want them to be productive and to have passions and for me, it's the passion that's there is that you give women the, the passion. They're not caring about their abusive relationships anymore. They're not focusing 100% on all the negativity. Now you're giving them something positive to think about. Jeanette Murphy is trying to stay positive about her own release. Although Murphy has 23 years left on her sentence at Purdy, she's asked for a parole hearing. I have found my passion in life, and that, I believe, is what everybody searches for. If Murphy's hearing is successful, she plans to continue her work on the outside. She hopes to be a consultant working between Evergreen and the Department of Corrections. I honestly never thought of working with Evergreen through DOC because, of course, you get out of the Department of Corrections, you wouldn't be done. But now I see that I have some empowerment skills and that I could encourage the women and help administration face those barriers. And for the Sustainable Prisons Project? My eventual goal is for this project to get as big as this country. There are prisons in every state of our nation. There are prisoners in every one of those prisons. And there's sustainability and science work that needs to be done in every state as well.